returning home to senior day against Marshall. Glad to have you with us again at the Graham Center. I'm AJ Ricketts alongside Butch Davis, Panther Talk Live here at the GC. You know, you play football, you play enough games, you're eventually perhaps going to head back to the locker room on the wrong ends of a fourth quarter spurts. And uh, the, the storylines coming out of that game, obviously sure. the defending against the run was tough this week, but also yeah. the, the first quarter with strange sequences, a drop sure. pass you don't see from CJ a lot, the, the play at the one yard line with the fumble, uh, special teams play, just a lot of things going against the squad. Yeah, you know what, AJ, I mean, obviously when you've coached a long time, you've seen a lot of things happen. And one of the things from a head coach's perspective and probably even the assistants, when you don't take advantage of opportunities that present themselves early in a ball game, it almost always comes back to haunt you. And you take a look at the way that the game started, and obviously, you know, you just referenced, you know, C.J. dropping a bomb, an explosive play that would have been, you know, a 45, 50-yard touchdown pass, which would have been a great play. I mean, protection was good. The throw was good. Hit him in the hands, and, uh, you know, nobody feels worse about it than he does. But then eventually, you know, you drive the ball down to the one-yard line, and now for the second time you don't take advantage of an opportunity. It's first and goal at the two-inch line. I mean, literally – the, the, the video looked like it almost that the ball hit the line on the run previous to that. Then you fumble the ball at the one-yard line, so now there's two wasted opportunities. Yeah. Then you go along a little bit later on, and obviously, you know, we had a fake field goal with Jose Borgales and Stone. Had been absolutely just letter perfect, you know, all leading up for about a month, you know, making sure that we could execute that. And uh, whether we would have got a touchdown out of that or whether or not maybe that we potentially would have gotten maybe at least a first down inside the 10-yard line, three points for a field goal, maybe for a touchdown. And then a big play was the defensive play when uh, Rashad Dames, Hits the yeah. wide receiver, and literally, you can watch the film all you want to. No chance at all is it is it targeting. More, d d you know, sad is the fact that it was a catch, and it should have been a fumble and a recovery in the end zone for a touchdown. So any way you want to spin those things, I mean, that's 17 to 21 points in the first half, yeah. and you go at the start of the first of the fourth quarter, and the score is 21 to 14. You're down by seven, and you've missed those three or four opportunities to to put additional points on the board and to take points off the board, you know, from the standpoint. So, uh, you know, you wish that it would have come, turned out differently, and obviously we struggled. Uh, throughout uh, throughout the game, but especially in the fourth quarter and stopping the run. Guys were a little bit tired, exhausted, missed tackles, which uh, has haunted us throughout the course of the season, and that is something that has got to get better. Uh, but I, I, I think our kids were prepared. They played well. They started off good. We just didn't execute the way we needed to. Let me ask you the overall perspective of the game. You already had Olin Cushion missing the first half, and then yeah. the Dames gets ejected. Yeah. It's the second straight week. It's been on the unfortunate side of a targeting penalty. You said last week yeah. the conference called and said, hey, that should have been reversed. So you're missing two of your key defensive backs. Sure. But you go into the fourth quarter, it's still a one-possession game and a yep. contest in which FAU did not punt. It kind of felt like maybe the Temple Bowl game last year in which you know, the offense wasn't rolling, but there was it was still a ball game. It's coming still late. a ball game, yeah. and absolutely. I mean, you know, when you look at that and you, and you kind of reflect back on it, and we showed the players yesterday 10 or 12 plays that legitimately would have made a difference in the ball game. I mean, we had them backed up, A.J., twice. They started drives at the one-yard line. Yeah. Those have got to be, they have to be three and outs. You've got to be able to make them punt out of the back of the end zone, and we allowed them to get off the goal line. If they punt out of the back of the end zone, Regardless of what kind of uh, punt return that Maurice Alexander gets, you're going to take the ball probably inside the 40-yard line. You're one first down away from at least kicking field goals on both of those possessions. We let them out. They drive the ball, flip the field position. And, and again, you, when you look at opportunities when they present themselves, you've got to capitalize on them. A number of positives, though, to draw from this game as we move forward to UTSA. One, obviously a huge storyline, the return of Anthony Jones. How great yeah. was it to see that? And when Anthony talked about his return after the game. Let's go to that clip here. When, when them guys won Old Dominion game, you know, they all signed the ball, brought it to the hospital for me, man. And, and just every day, man, it was guys rushing in and out the hospital, you know, teammates. And, you know, they actually had to put me in my own room, man. It was too many people, man. I just thank all my teammates, man, all my brothers, all, all the people that was behind me that prayed for me. I really appreciate it. I'm just ready to move forward. 
so appreciative of the support while he was in the hospital. But you heard him say he just wants to move forward now. And he had he had eight yeah. carries, uh, you know, just as much as anybody else, the leading sure. rusher with Sean Darius Phillips. But uh, a special moment, a warranted ovation when he had that first handoff. Just ter tremendous to see. Yeah, I mean, it is awesome. I mean, this, this whole thing about the appreciation that he's back is bigger than football. It's yeah. great that he's back on the football team. It is great that he's alive, he's healthy. Uh, you know, the rest of his life, you know, that'll be something that'll be a part of it. And I know how important it was, the support he got from the teammates when he was in the hospital as he was recovering over the last couple of weeks. They really cheered him, and they were very thrilled to get him back into the, you know, back on the team and back into games. Yeah, terrific to see, and, and perhaps it hasn't been decided yet. He only has played in two games. He has redshirted before, but we'll see how that concludes. Sure. Some decisions to make moving forward with with Anthony Jones and his uh, future down the road. Another positive, uh, Bryce Singleton ended up mm -hmm. as the top play on SportsCenter. A couple of Odell <laughs> Beckham-ish grabs. I mean, you, it is tangibly clear the impact he makes when he's on the uh, field. Some ridiculous catches. Yeah, it's good to get him back. I mean, obviously he missed several games at the beginning of the season, but, you know, Bryce is one of those guys, he's a he's an unbelievable competitor, and he's got great hands. Uh, the throw, you know, was thrown exactly where it has to be. The way he went up, pulled it down. Odell Beckham, you talked about that. But you see this a lot anymore on ESPN highlights and stuff, but it was great to see him. You see it in practice a lot of times with a lot of our guys, uh, but obviously it was a big play. He said he goes to the jugs machines before practice, catches 300 yep. of them before yep. each and every time uh, he takes the practice field. You see the results of that work pre-practice, post-practice. All right, yep. we'll take a break. Be right back in just a little bit. Panther Talk Live with Butch Davis of the Graham Center. Stay with us. We are committed. We are uplifting. We are strong. We are authentic. On the field. In the classroom. In the community. It's not just something we do. It's how we live. It's our way. Always pushing one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. Most of my memories as a little girl are in a volleyball gym. My neighbor, Betsy, I wanted to be just like her. So she played volleyball, I wanted to play volleyball. I was a terrible drawer, but ended up drawing a picture of myself and I had a USA jersey on and shockingly enough, it was number seven. We single filed into the gym and the first step that I took, I just had these crazy chills. It was a really emotional moment for me. What do you want volleyball to do for you? Where do you want this path to take you? I want to be on the USA Olympic team. I want to play in the Olympics one day. Surreal is the word that I have to use because it's something that I never have experienced before. We're a university founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights. It's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. Wednesday night, a new era begins for FIU Hoops, the season opener for Jeremy Ballard and company. 7 p.m. at the Ocean Bank Convocation Center against Weber International. All CUSA member Brian Beer looking to bring the back of the magic of 1995. Tomorrow night, the FIU women tip off at home. 7 p.m. start against the 25th ranked Miami Hurricanes. Tier Malcolm, a revamped roster of Panthers looking for a notable win. We welcome you back to Panther Talk Live with Butch Davis at the FIU Graham Center. Saturday night on the road at UTSA, 7 p.m. kickoff, an opportunity to go 5-1 and one in conference play. The attitude now moving forward. Next play, G.A. Steven Siasi summing it up well. It's a great day to get better. All that matters, the next rep, the next class, the next film session. Lock in today and get better. That is the attitude as we move forward into UTSA preparation. A.J. Ricketts alongside Butch Davis. As we prepare for the Roadrunners, let's start by looking back at what was uh, as thrilling a game as we had last season, win number six for the Panthers. All right, UTSA last season had the 11th ranked defense in the country. Some studs along the defensive yep. line that were going to play in the NFL, but both defenses came to play. There was no score at the half. It was a game in which Newt Salisbury had two sure. and a half sacks. 
Trayvon Williams and Anthony went racked up 23 tackles. And then in the second half, a pair mm -hmm. of touchdowns within 13 seconds. It was a thrilling game. It really was, and it was a hard-fought game. And you already referenced the fact of how talented they were on defense. They have a lot of good athletes. They have a, a, a great recruiting base in the San Antonio area, the central part of the state of Texas. So they're going to always have really, really good, talented athletes. Last year, their defensive line, and this year, they are big. I mean, they're big, they're strong, they're powerful. They had a great defensive end last year uh, that went in the first round. Yeah. Uh, it was one of the best defensive linemen that we had seen the entire season. But last year, obviously, our defense rose to the occasion, kept them out of the end zone, did a great job swarming, gang tackling. Obviously, here, a great goal line stand, keeps them out of the end zone, and you know, you win the game 14 to seven, and uh, you know it was it was one of the games that I think our kids really truly, you know, they spilled their guts the entire game to make the game happen. A lot of laterals on that final play for UTSA before the Panthers fell on top of it, and, and the celebration ensued. And as wild a celebration that Ricardo Silva had seen it in quite some time. You remember the scene in the locker room after that game? <laughs> you, you, you come in yeah. in year one, you get win number six. These seniors are going bowling. What was that moment like? Oh, it was, it was unbelievable because they'd had so many disappointing seasons in the previous years that those seniors, I mean, they were ecstatic. They were in there. Guys were hugging. Guys were crying. I mean, they were just, you know, it was one of those things that obviously when you start the season, one of the, you know, one of the objectives is, is obviously you'd love to become bowl eligible. Yeah. Then you want to put yourself in a position to compete for the conference championship and those kinds of things. But that moment during the course of that game, as, as hard as they played, it meant a lot to those kids. All right, you fast forward to this season. At this point, UTSA 3-6 and six on the year. Three of those games, though, the first three games of the season to power five opponents on the road, a gauntlet yep. to start the season for Frank Wilson. Moving, they, they go three losses, three yep. wins, three losses after that. Most recently, La Tech, Southern Miss, and UAB on the road. But this is this is a tough one. Their offense can, can be explosive at, at times. They, look, they're statistically their last and pass and rushing total offense, but they've shown flashes of it this season. If they get things rolling in the Alamo Dome, they got a big crowd, as you see here most weeks. It can be tough. Well, that's one of the things about it is obviously they, their student body and their fans and stuff, they're averaging over 30,000 yeah. fans for every single one of their games. So they're going to show up. It's going to be a, you know, a loud environment for our players playing in a dome where the noise doesn't escape. And a, and a football team that's hungry. I mean, we've said it many, many times that, uh, you know, and, and hopefully it'll, you know, apply to our kids also that wounded animals are some of the most difficult people. And, uh, you know, UTSA, I know that Frank's doing a great job trying to build that culture and getting those kids to continue to compete and play hard. And uh, you watch how they started the game last week against the University of Alabama Birmingham, who is playing extraordinarily yeah, well. They are yeah. playing really good. And uh, UTSA, I mean, they gave them fits early through the first half. Uh, the three wins this season, Texas State, UTEP, and Rice for the Roadrunners. Mm -hmm. What have you seen on film and those wins that's impressed you versus maybe the second half of the UAB yeah. game when, when the Blazers were able to, to jump on top of them in a 49-point yeah. win? What, 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 where do they hide and where are their weaknesses? Well, they're consistent in the running game. They really try to feature the running game. They do a lot of counters and traps and misdirection things. A little bit like what uh, what FAU did last week with the jet sweeps. Yep. They try to get guys on the perimeter with speed guys on the outside. The quarterbacks is one of the issues. They've played three different quarterbacks. They've had guys in and out because guys have made mistakes. They've made, you know, created turnovers. They've thrown interceptions. So they haven't had the consistency at the quarterback that I'm sure that they would like to. But they have big receivers. I mean, their receivers are, are physical. They're big. Uh, you know, they try to get the ball you know, midway down the field from 10 to 25 to 30 yards down the field. Yeah. Those guys, that's where those guys are the most dangerous. And then defensively, I mean, they're like everybody that we see, AJ. It's almost like it's become the national norm, is certainly within Conference USA, is the fact that everybody stunts, blitzes. They show you a front, then they try to move before the ball is snapped to get to mess with your pass protections and to create opportunities to get free runners yeah. to the quarterback. In Middle Tennessee, I think we spotlighted yep. in terms of that, but now it seems like the most defense. Everybody's trying to do it. That. Yep. Yeah. UTSA quarterback led by uh, Cordell Grundy. Five touchdowns, three interceptions this year. He's played the majority of the games. They're looking for more consistency out of him. And then Coach mentioned their, their head coach, Frank Wilson, former recruiting coordinator and associate head coach at LSU, hired in 2015 at UTSA. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get the ball rolling for the Roadrunners, who average a great crowd in the Alamo. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a tough game. All right, when we come back, we'll take your Twitter questions a little bit more. Coach had a big honor last week, along with Ken Dorsey. We'll <laughs> chat about that when we return. Panther Talk Live. Stay with us. We are committed. We are uplifting. We are strong. We are authentic. On the field. In the classroom. In the community. It's not just something we do. It's how we live. 
It's our way. Always pushing one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. Most of my memories as a little girl are in a volleyball gym. My neighbor, Betsy, I wanted to be just like her. So she played volleyball, I wanted to play volleyball. I was a terrible drawer, but ended up drawing a picture of myself and I had a USA jersey on and shockingly enough, it was number seven. We single filed into the gym and the first step that I took, I just had these crazy chills. It was a really emotional moment for me. What do you want volleyball to do for you? Where do you want this path to take you? I want to be on the USA Olympic team. I want to play in the Olympics one day. Surreal is the word that I have to use because it's something that I never have experienced before. We're a university founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights. It's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. Welcome you back to uh, just outside Sweetwater on the campus of FIU at the Graham Center. Another nice day. Fall has come and gone. We're back to summertime temperatures here in South Florida. Thanks for joining us again on Panther Talk Live with Butch Davis. Going to address a couple Twitter questions we had here as we do each and every week. We are a show of the people. We appreciate you tuning in each and every week. Thanks for chiming in with, uh, with your questions. All right, first thing. And it was often asked question for, for sure heading into this week. Sure. Uh, Pike Danny wants to ask, kind of sums up a couple of things. How does the staff plan to address the, the run defense? Yeah. It's been an issue all season and on Saturday are, are undoing. Um, certainly 400 plus yards, I think. Mm -hmm. What's what's the big key in improving and The that? two biggest issues, AJ, is consistency of being and doing your job and being where you're supposed to be. That inexperienced defenses and it keeps happening and it's one of the things that we've got to address Either yeah. we've got to change personnel or we got to get guys to buy into the idea that this is my gap this is where i'm supposed to be and all the misdirection in the backfield you cannot guess where you think the ball is going and you jump out of your gap because good running backs as we saw this past weekend they'll start one direction yeah. and then all of a sudden it's a jump cut or it's a slash or it's a cut back and they cut into the to the vacated gap that you're responsible for sure. so do your job and stay at home and and trust that the people at the point of attack are going to do their job so obviously that's one of the big issues and then the second biggest issue is is once guys get there you know to the second level we got to make tackles yeah. we got to make tackles and we got a gang tackle and we got a swarm tackle and you can't leave it up to one guy on a very talented running back it, it, we went through this same situation when i was at, with the dallas cowboys going against barry sanders yeah I mean, <laughs> you'd say okay we know barry sanders is going to touch the ball 25 or 30 times and they actually against us, and we had the number one defense three times in six years. Yeah. He rushed for over 200 yards, and we literally, you know, we had to change the way that we attack the gaps and the way that you attack those kind of runners. You can't let them get to the second level because they will make guys miss one on one. Yeah, Singletary, most yeah. of the time, he certainly gets his, but that duel with Kareth Wyden, sure, and even with the rushing disparity, 21 14 in the fourth quarter, but eventually yep. you, you allow 400 plus, that'll probably catch up to you over the course of the no game. Our, our second question uh, from It's Not Carl. Carlos, how do you keep yourself and the team motivated mm -hmm. after a tough loss? And, and you know, you sure. look back to last year, after two losses, ODU and FA, you, you respond with two big wins, yeah. UMass and Western Kentucky. You go back to 2010, you, you lose a rivalry matchup with NC State. Sure. How do you respond? How did your team respond after that? A big mm -hmm. win to get the victory bell against Duke and a, a Music City Bowl victory yeah. against Tennessee. Sure. What have you done in your, in your career, sure. in your history, to kind of get guys to respond after a game they emotionally invested in. You know, the most important thing, AJ, is is you've got to get guys to understand that anytime something you don't win a game, 
how come? You know, and you got to address it. you got to be honest about it. We don't lie to the players. You know, we take responsibility if it's things, calls that we made or situations that we put them in. But, you know, you've got to grow and you got to learn. I mean, every time players play, they got to look at the film. they got to evaluate how was my technique, how was my fundamentals, how was my effort, yeah. how was did I take care of my assignment. And then you've got to fix those kinds of things every single week. I shared a story with them yesterday that uh, when I was at the University of Miami and after we were coming out of the 31 uh, probation, losing the sanctions and losing all the scholarships, we yeah. played Syracuse and uh, in the Carrier Dome. And we actually lost the game 66-13 to 13, week 10 of that season. And getting on the plane, the reality of playing the last game of the season, we were playing number two ranked UCLA who were 10-0. And we had just lost 66 to 13, and it's like, okay, the leaders got to step up, coaches. You got to put that behind. You got to focus on that game. And obviously, we won that game, yeah. and we beat UCLA. We beat North Carolina State in the bowl game. But that win against UCLA started a 50-game winning streak of we won 50 and lost five over the next four years. So you know, you got to put those things behind you. You got to be honest with yourself and look at you know how can I change. And then it's all about attitude. Sure. It's about like you know you can't change the past, but you can certainly control the future. And a real of the bigger perspective that, look, a lot of work has been put in up to this point, and sure. a lot of good work has been done to put themselves at the top of the sure. East, 4-1, and one, a chance to improve to 5-1. and one. And just based on where a lot of these guys on this roster were a couple years ago, I think they're, they're certainly Absolutely. hopefully be able to recognize that and what's at stake the final three weeks yep. of the regular season. Okay, starting to wrap things up. A notable uh, accomplishment last week for you, a notable <laughs> day. Had to, had to show this up uh, on, on Panther Talk. Keys to the city. Yeah. FIU alum Francis Suarez uh, got a trip to City Hall last week. How was that? You and Ken Dorsey uh, getting getting the trip there and a big honor. And I know that was fun. Yeah, you know what, AJ, obviously it's a great honor. Uh, you know, uh, Mayor Suarez has done a phenomenal job with this city. The things that he's done uh, for Kenny and I to be recognized, you know, individually and certainly together, you know, I owe a great deal of of gratitude to Kenny as the starting quarterback for my years at the University of Miami. But uh, it's just a great honor to be recognized that, you know, somehow, some way, as a coach at Miami and coach here at FIU, uh, things that my wife and my son, we've been involved in, in a lot of community-related things like informed families yeah. with Peggy Sapp. And, and uh, you know, to be recognized that you're trying to make difference in the lives of kids in Dade County, it was very nice. You've been able to have Ken alongside you here at FIU for a couple of months now. He's yeah. an athletic director. And, and, you know, I think that's, that's a neat facet of what you built here in a year and a half. A lot of guys on staff. Are, are your former players, sure. and, yeah. and, and Ken in particular, how much fun has it to, to reunite with him yeah. and try to build something with someone he used to coach in the last decade? Yeah, you know what, AJ, it's great. I mean, if you get into coaching, you should get into it because you want to make a difference in kids' lives. And when you sit in their living room and you tell them at age 17 and 18, hey, I'm going to be there for you the rest of your life, not just the four years that you play. And so having guys like Bryn Renner that played for me at North Carolina, uh, you know, Kennard Lang, Kenny Holmes, uh, a lot of those guys, Kenny Kelly that are around. I mean, it is just awesome to have them there. We've had a lot of kids both from uh, my North Carolina days. Uh, one game last year, A.J., I think we had nine of them on the sidelines pregame. Just coming back because, you know, there's guys on the staff, Alan Mogridge, myself, Ren Renner, my son, Drew. You know, they know those guys. We get uh, in it, you get Miami players like uh, Russell Maryland when they're back yeah. in town to get them to come back in. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just awesome to see them and to see how their life has turned out, you know, and uh, hopefully – you know, you feel like that maybe I helped a little tiny bit help their life. And a lot of those relationships starts with the recruiting grind really quick. <laughs> was Ken Dorsey's recruitment the furthest you, you think you traveled for uh, going about. out to Gal California for yeah. a couple times? You remember yeah. those days? Flew out on the red on the from Miami to San Francisco on the on the on the red eye, get a rent car, drive over, watch him play in a basketball game That's at right. like he seven, played hoops. It's like seven thirty in the morning <laughs> and stuff, and it's like I'm teary eyed and watching him and then we spent a couple of hours together. Together, but yeah, that yeah. was between he and DJ Williams. Those are probably two of the furthest I've ever had to go. Yeah, recruiting keeps it interesting year in yep. and year out. And there wasn't even early signing day back then. Yeah. <laughs> you got a December early signing day coming up. That's yeah. certainly part of the picture. All right, last thing here, kind of off, off off kilter, but I, want, I wanted to, to ask because look, Monday Monday is the big planning day, the big preparation sure day, is. and it's, it's double digit hours it seems every Monday. Mm -hmm. Your development as a coach from a GA to an assistant to an associate to head coach. 
have the hours been the same at each stop, yeah. or do you feel when he? I mean, we got a we got vo voting day tomorrow. I think we <laughs> big NFL games have been going on. You want to keep track of your former players, what's going on around the country? But do, can you focus on anything else when it's football season? Mm -hmm. What's the time management? Yeah, fast? not not much, AJ. <laughs> to be honest with you, I mean, it, it hasn't changed very much yeah. at all. The only thing that's changed is the players now get a day off. Coaches don't get a day <laughs> off, uh, but uh, it, it, you know, used to you'd. You'd come back and you'd have a little bit of a light workout on Sunday, and you practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, and Friday, and play again on Saturday. <laughs> so, uh, the players' lives have gotten significantly better. Coaches' lives hadn't changed at they all. They have that one day off now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great to see, Coach. Last thing here, as we always wrap things up, uh, and alluded a little bit to it earlier, but your your strategic points, your, your emphasis against UTS, UTSA this week as a squad. Yeah. Looks for win number five in six games. Yeah, well, it, it all boils down to us, AJ. I mean, literally, you can talk about the opponent, and obviously you show the kids the schemes, the plans, you know, who their personnel is. But it's really about us. It's about our emphasis Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, having great practices, yep. making sure that our execution is is solid, that we know exactly what we're going to do. We know how we're going to play, how hard we're going to play, and then it's just a matter of going out and executing and doing what you do during the course of the week. We're looking forward to it. It should be a great yep. atmosphere in San Antonio. San Antonio, make sure you tune in this week at 7 p.m. Kickoff in San Antonio. Coach, appreciate the time. Thank As you, always, AJ. thanks so always much. Good. All right, that's another edition of Panther Talk Live with Butch Davis. Looking to get back on track this week. Win number seven, potentially, this weekend in Texas. Make sure to tune in as FIU continues their hopes to appear in the Conference USA Championship. We'll see you next week on Monday morning. Take care.